The sky glows with stars every night. But on August 12th, 2023, something else lit up the night sky all over the world. It was Comet Nishimura. This wasn't just a beautiful sight, it was an unexpected one too. So much so, that it bypassed some of the most high-tech telescopes in the world. Join us as we bring you all the details about this mysterious comet and how its sheer existence has the entire world in shock. Hideo Nishimura is a 74-year-old space photographer and an expert at that. Almost every night of the week, he gets right under the open sky and photographs what he sees. Most of the time, he'll just see stars or glimpses of other planets that may have matched up their orbits with the Earth. But on August 12th, he saw something he wasn't expecting. A faint green glow flew across the sky, and he instantly knew what it was. A comet. Nishimura had spotted three other comets in his life too, so he knew exactly what he was looking at the second he saw it. But the crazy thing is that he was actually the first to spot it. Not even the Panoramic Survey Telescope and Rapid Response System were able to beat him to it. PanSTARS is a notable astronomical survey program based in Hawaii. It's equipped with a collection of telescopes and cameras designed for capturing wide-angle views of the sky, and it stands as one of the most powerful telescopes that have ever been made. So it's easy to assume that nothing gets past this piece of technology, but that's not what happened. Its primary mission is to methodically scan the entire visible sky, keeping an eye out for various celestial objects like asteroids, comets, supernova, and other dynamic or mobile phenomena. Yet, Nishimura made it past it just fine. This is quite surprising, considering that PanSTARRS is celebrated for its expertise in identifying, tracking, and characterizing near-Earth objects. It's instrumental in pinpointing potentially hazardous objects that might approach Earth. In addition to that, it conducts surveys to chart and study a diverse range of stars, galaxies, and other cosmic entities. This data is invaluable to research efforts in astronomy. This telescope isn't messing around here. PanSTARRS is purpose-built to diligently monitor the sky for changes and any other events that might need to be looked at, particularly focusing on objects that are exhibiting alterations in brightness or position over time. Even then, it took this telescope a while before it was able to confirm the comet's existence, which is why it was named after its actual founder, Nishimura. This comet was visible from September 12th and going all the way to the 17th, but getting a good look at it wasn't an easy thing to do. You had to either climb up to the tallest high-rise you could find, or travel out to open areas where you can get a good look at the sky. That too, only at dawn. Only those who were actually able to put in the effort were able to see this beautiful comet in real life. This particular comet is pretty sizable at about one kilometer in diameter, and it's got the whole comet package going on, nucleus, coma, and tail. Now, inside that nucleus, you've got the basic building blocks of the comet. Think dust and various types of ices like water, carbon dioxide, methane, and ammonia. These ices are basically leftovers from when our solar system was just starting out. In a way, its nucleus is like a time capsule, holding on to details of what things were like back in the early days of our solar system. When scientists study the composition of a comet's nucleus, they're getting a front row seat to the processes that led to the formation of planets and everything else in space. Comets basically serve as remnants from the protoplanetary disk that gave birth to our solar system. When we look into the composition of a comet's nucleus, we find out more about the vital clues about the elemental building blocks that contributed to the formation of Earth and its planetary companions. It's one thing to theorize, but quite another when you're face to face with these cosmic wonders in all their glory. Comet Nishimura isn't just special here because of the way it was found, but also because of its composition. The one kilometer diameter is almost unheard of. This is particularly special because it surpasses the typical size of comet nuclei. But what's the big deal here? Well, with greater surface area, larger nuclei provide the potential for more diverse and detailed observations. This encompasses the opportunity to scrutinize distinct zones of the nucleus, shedding light on potential disparities in composition or activity across its surface. The thing is, understanding the size and makeup of a comet's nucleus is extremely important. If a comet's path brings it near Earth, this information becomes crucial for assessing any potential risk of impact. If we don't really know what we're up against, how would we protect ourselves if things take a turn for the worst? We need to know about the comet's activity to really know if it's going to be a threat or not. 
A comet's activity, which includes the development of a coma and a tail, is a direct result of how it interacts with the sun's radiation. Comets have highly elliptical orbits, taking them from the distant edges of the solar system, where they're mostly inactive, toward the inner solar system as they approach the sun. As a comet nears the sun, the increasing intensity of solar radiation significantly affects it. This radiation warms up the nucleus, causing the ice on its surface to transition directly from a solid to a gaseous state in a process known as sublimation. In the case of comets, this means ice like water, carbon dioxide, and other volatile compounds turn into gas without ever becoming liquid. The resulting sublimated gases and dust form a cloud-like structure around the nucleus, creating what we call the coma. The solar wind, a stream of charged particles emitted by the sun, interacts with the coma. This interaction exerts pressure on the coma, propelling it away from the sun. This phenomenon is known as radiation pressure. As a result of the combined effects of radiation pressure and the solar wind, the gas and dust within the coma are pushed outward, forming two distinct tails. The ion tail, which is composed of charged particles or ions, extends directly away from the sun due to the influence of the solar wind. The other, known as the dust tail, has larger dust particles and tends to curve slightly, tracing the path of the comet's orbit. The characteristics of the comet's nucleus are also pivotal in this process. Every little thing like the nucleus's size, composition, and level of activity dictates the amount of gas and dust available for sublimation. This, in turn, impacts the size and luminosity of the coma and tails. Having a grasp of the nucleus's properties helps scientists make predictions about how active a comet is likely to become as it approaches the sun. This knowledge is vital for planning observations and missions aimed at studying comets. As Comet Nishimura makes its way along its orbit toward the sun, it encounters escalating levels of solar radiation. This radiation also has potent ultraviolet rays and the solar wind, a stream of charged particles propelled by the sun. And things just go to the next level here. The solar radiation warms up the comet's nucleus. Influenced by this heat, the ice crystals undergo sublimation. As the nucleus warms up and the ice turns into gas, the decarbon molecules on the comet's surface are exposed to the sun's ultraviolet radiation and solar wind. This strong radiation causes the dicarbon molecules to break apart, releasing individual carbon atoms. These carbon atoms are very reactive. Near the sun, they quickly combine with nearby atoms or molecules, creating various carbon-containing compounds. When these newly formed compounds are hit by solar radiation, they light up, giving off a bright green glow like neon lights. That's where Comet Nishimura gets its color from. What's fascinating is that Comet Nishimura is not here, near us all the time. It actually comes from the far outer regions of the solar system, where it's usually in a cold and dormant state. Out there, it stays hidden and inactive. Like many comets, Comet Nishimura follows an oval-shaped orbit around the sun. This means its distance from the sun changes as it moves along its path. At its farthest point, Aphelion, it's way out in the distant solar system. But at its closest point, Perihelion, it gets much closer to the sun. As Comet Nishimura approaches the sun and reaches perihelion, it becomes visible from Earth. This heightened visibility is a result of the intensified solar radiation, which triggers significant activity in the comet. As the comet draws nearer to the sun, the powerful radiation kickstarts the sublimation process within its nucleus. This leads to the creation of the coma as well. Not just that, the solar wind and radiation pressure propel the gases and dust away from the sun shaping the comet's distinctive tails, the period when Comet Nishimura is closest to both Earth and the Sun, typically around perihelion, marks its peak visibility. During this phase, the comet would shine its brightest, possibly rivaling bright stars in the sky. This isn't just true for this particular comet, but for others too. That's why so many comets throughout history ended up being so famous. Comet Shoemaker Levy 9, also known as D1993F2, made a significant mark in space history. Discovered on the night of March 24, 1993, by Carolyn and Jean Shoemaker, along with David Levy, this comet brought a rare event right before our eyes, the direct observation of a comet colliding with another celestial body. In July 1992, Shoemaker Levy 9 had a close encounter with Jupiter. The planet's immense gravity tore the comet into over 20 pieces, each taking its own path around Jupiter. These pieces were named alphabetically from A to W. On July 16, 1994, 
these comet fragments slammed into Jupiter's atmosphere at an incredible speed of 137,300 miles per hour. Telescopes all over the world, along with the Hubble Space Telescope and the Galileo spacecraft en route to Jupiter, watched it all happen. Even though these impacts happened on the hidden side of Jupiter, as seen from Earth, NASA's Galileo spacecraft, en route to Jupiter at that time, had a front row seat to the show. The Hubble Space Telescope also joined in, capturing vivid images of the impact sites. This event not only fascinated astronomers, but also gave us valuable insights into comets and their interactions with other celestial bodies. That's something no one in the world had seen before. Comet Hayakutaki also treated skywatchers to a rare celestial event when it was discovered on January 30, 1996. It passed remarkably close to Earth, just 9.3 million miles away, so it was visible from all over the world. Amateur astronomer Yuji Hyakutake from southern Japan was the one who discovered it. After years of comet hunting, he settled in Kagoshima Prefecture, drawn by the dark rural skies. Armed with binoculars with 6-inch objective lenses, he was looking at the sky when he found the comet. Comet Hyakutake was nothing short of spectacular. It achieved a striking apparent visual magnitude of zero and spanned nearly 80 degrees across the night sky, making it a prominent sight worldwide. By late February 1996, it became visible to the naked eye, complete with a lengthy blue ion tail that stretched gracefully across the skies, accompanied by a broader though shorter white dust tail. The closest celestial rendezvous occurred on March 24, 25, 1996, as the comet passed within a mere 0.1 astronomical unit, equivalent to 9.3 million miles of Earth. This marked one of the closest cometary approaches in the preceding two centuries culminating in an illumination that rivaled a first-magnitude star during its closest proximity. Following this close encounter, Comet Hayakutake reached its perihelion on May 1, 1996. As April dawned, the comet gracefully faded away. Astronomers worldwide, supported by NASA and dedicated amateurs, went on an extensive data-gathering mission during the comet's proximity to Earth. This period brought with it remarkable discoveries, including the detection of X-rays emanating from the comet's nucleus and the determination of its rotation period. And the same thing is happening now with Comet Nishimura. Although that involves studying comets like this in extreme detail, if there's one major thing we've learned from this comet is that even discovering one can be quite difficult on its own. These comets, characterized by highly elongated orbits with substantial eccentricities, venture into the far reaches of the solar system. Their paths can be notably affected by non-gravitational forces, such as outgassing, leading to unpredictable trajectories. Predicting the precise course of a long-period comet proves to be an arduous task due to their interactions with various forces. Minute influences, like those from planetary gravitation or gas emissions, can yield substantial deviations over time. Given that long-period comets complete an orbit in excess of 200 years, they're typically identified during a single appearance, offering limited historical data to precisely define their trajectories. This dearth of past observations introduces greater uncertainty in forecasting their future appearances. Not just that, but these comets may even undergo close encounters with planets during their journey through the solar system. These encounters hold the potential to drastically modify their paths, further complicating accurate predictions of their future positions. With all of this, it's also possible that the gravitational pull of neighboring stars may influence the course of long-period comets. While infrequent, these interactions can introduce additional variables, adding to the challenge of plotting their orbits. Essentially, long-period comets possess the potential to appear virtually anywhere at any time. That isn't just fascinating, but pretty terrifying too, because you never know when it'll just change its way and head right for us. But there's a lot we can learn from here. By closely examining Comet Nishimura, scientists can directly analyze its unique composition. This includes the presence of decarbon molecules that we talked about earlier in the video, which provide valuable clues about the chemical processes in the outer solar system. Sending a spacecraft to Comet Nishimura allows for a detailed study of its surface. This includes observations of its shape, topography, and geological attributes. Data like this can offer significant insights into the nature of comets, just in case we end up seeing more in the near future, and especially if we see some that have a more direct path towards Earth. A spacecraft can also be sent to collect samples from the comet's surface and bring them back to Earth. 
these samples can bring real data into our hands about what the ancient solar system looked like. Tracking comet Nishimura as it approaches and moves away from the sun allows scientists to observe its dynamic behavior. This real-time data is vital in understanding cometary activity. Even though no two comets will ever really be the same, knowing as much as you possibly can about one can teach you a lot about the other two. Equipped with specialized instruments, the spacecraft can directly analyze the gases and dust emitted by the comet. This data sheds light on the processes driving cometary outgassing. Instruments on the spacecraft can measure surface temperatures and identify specific compounds. This information helps characterize the materials present and understand the thermal processes the comet goes through. Getting up close to the comet's core provides detailed information about its size, shape, and internal structure. This offers a deeper understanding of the comet overall, which is something that could prove to be very beneficial in the future. When we study Comet Nishimura and gather data about its composition, behavior, and characteristics, we gain valuable insights into the specific features and processes of this particular comet. But the real depth of understanding comes when we take this data and compare it with information gathered from other comets. By looking at multiple comets, we can identify patterns, similarities, and differences. This allows us to draw broader conclusions about the nature of comets as a whole. For example, we might find that certain types of molecules or materials are common across different comets, while others are more unique. Not just that, but this comparative approach helps us recognize any variations in behavior or composition that might be linked to factors like the comet's origin, its journey through space, or its exposure to different environmental conditions. Since comets barely ever stick around, the faster we can gather data about them and put that data to the test, the better. That way, we'd have a much better idea about the way these visitors work when we see the next one. As for Comet Nishimura, it's now already survived its brush with the sun and is now on its way back to the far reaches of the solar system. While it won't be back for almost another 500 years, you might be able to catch one last glimpse of it from Australia between September 20th and 27th in the Leo constellation. But only those who really get the conditions right will be able to see this comet easily. Would you actually give it a shot? Let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And like always, we'll see you in the next one.